Hi, Paul. Hi, Tristan. Special session. <laughs> um, this is going to be fun. I'm reviewing my notes. We're going to talk about LinkedIn today. I believe you're going to enjoy this. Make sure, uh, please interrupt me. We have a huge crowd of all two of you. So I, I want to make this personal for you. I want to make sure I'm biased. I think this is going to be the best 30 minutes of your entire course. I really do. Let's go through the poll questions real quick. Don't bother to answer them. I'll just tell you why I'm asking them. Um, and that is actually false. You can get higher on the smaller loans. It's a trick question. Next question, Joseph. Yes. And that is true. You can collect a late fee. Next question. And that is true. Now, as BDOs, you're not gonna you're not gonna get the appraisal up front. Yeah, you're gonna do a Zillow. But if it comes in it's within ninety percent, you can close the loan. If it's less than ninety percent, you can still close the loan. You have to do a memo to file. In this situation, I would do a memo to file. It's very simple. Hey, we're, we think it's worth 2.5. The appraisal says it's worth 2.3. But guess what? We're not being paid back by collateral. We're being paid back by cash flow. That's your get out of jail free card. Next question. This is a little bit old. I'd be curious. Just a You guys can answer this. Is, is this affecting either one of you? It was a problem earlier in the year. I don't, I don't know if that's been resolved. Yeah, I think it's been resolved. All right, very good. Um, week seven, I talked about special nuances, special weed topics. I believe BDOs should be aware of this. I believe a BDO should know when you need that business valuation. I don't think you need to know what the alphabet soup of certifications are for the appraiser. We'll let the underwriters worry about that. You know that you need an appraisal. You know it needs to be independent. You know business valuations need to be independent. Um, you should know those items. A prudent BDO is going to be telling the borrower, hey, this is what's going to cost you. Um, and um, the more you know about the back room process, I believe the better of a BDO you are. Again, I signed a bunch of SOP reading. I would encourage you to um, put that SOP PDF on your computer. Get in the habit of doing searches and become an expert what it says. And the more you read it, as I do, you find, guess what? There's a lot of gray area. And um, it, it, it'll help your professionalism. And um, let's see. Joseph, are we going to talk about, let's talk about week eight. Let's finish this up, and then we'll get into LinkedIn, because I want to talk about it. The applicant's, okay, go back to the email. The applicant's green card is expired. Can you close the loan? No, you can't. You have to get a new one. E email question number two. Uh, clarification requirements for independent business friends. We know we need an independent valuation. Down is over 250. But what about the situation where there's new money added to finance and things like new You know what my answer is when these things, what if, if you're asking the question, the answer is yes, we need it. That's my answer. If, if you're asking, well, do I need it, go get it. <laughs> Remember, just because SBA says, well, if it's only 250, you don't have need it, or 240, but a prudent lender may say, I don't care if it's 150, I'm going to get some type of appraisal. You can choose to do that. The problem with SBA lending is that if you do an appraisal or if you represent that this restaurant equipment is worth $150,000 or $250,000 and at liquidation we only get 10 cents on the dollar and $25,000, you're going to face a repair. That's the problem with SBA lending. So we don't want to be in fantasy world. We don't want happy talk. We want to know where we are with respect to true valuations. Uh, we know a PLP lender, we can clear the 912 ourselves. The question is, what do we do? Do we need to do a national background check? What if we have a concern? What if we think that borrower is lying? The answer is do what you do on your conventional loans. If you're not going to do any conventional loans, don't worry about it. If you're going to do any conventional loan, you better do it an SBA loan. That being said, if you have a concern that that borrower is not telling the truth for whatever reason, 
I think a prudent lender is going to start doing a little research. Uh, you can order background checks. You can pay for that. You can do that. Um, if you have a concern, I, 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 because the SOP is silent, then I would do it. There's a reason why we're professionals. There's a reason why something raises the hair of the back of our neck and you, you see enough deals that it doesn't pass the test. I think you have an obligation to find out what's going on. Um, the problem for the borrower, and here's the take, it's not for the bank, it's for the borrower. If that loan goes bad and there's a default, this is the low hanging fruit for prosecutors. They're going to say you, they lied to a bank. Lying to you as a bank employee is a felony. And if they lie to you and they make a representation, hey, I had never been arrested, I haven't been, and I, I was, uh, I have that, uh, I hope no one here is a Cleveland fan. I have the Johnny Mazzell uh, situation where maybe I'm, I'm going to get <laughs> indicted or not for hitting my girlfriend. Uh, that, needs to be, that needs to be disclosed. And if there's a loss, they're gonna, that's where they get the borrowers. And the borrowers, and they get convicted, they plead out. They, there's no defense. Okay. Hey, we got Ruben and Lourdes. Welcome all. Okay, we got all four of you. Okay. Uh, week eight, more special stuff. Uh, be careful of franchise loans. That will change. It's going to change soon. I believe it'll be changed where it's simply going to be on a list. And if Jiffy Lube's on the list, you're not going to have to do anything else. But right now, loans that you process today are under the old rules. The rules will be changing. I talk about construction loans, um, little leasehold documentation. Again, the more you know as the underwriter, the more you can hold your hand for that borrower, the better professional you are. So enjoy those. I love the questions. Keep them coming. I love your feedback. I what I like is we started the course with how many, Joseph? Four? Guess how many? We have an office hours today. Four. You're all, you're all committed. Okay. Uh, it's, it's 1108 Pacific. <coughs> I'm gonna, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to go through this. I'll get you off by 1130. I, I respect your time. But I believe this is the most critical thing you can do to make money. Oh, and there's the remaining office hours. Go, go back to that slide, Joseph. Um, we're going to have two more next week. I'm going to talk about marketing 101, direct mail, and email. I know, but I, I'm going to, and then productivity. Week nine, I'm out of town. And why do we keep misspelling cancel? Cancel is one L. I'm picky about that. Okay, uh, here are the rules. Please ask questions. Type in, I have Joseph's going to be typing this in. He typed it SBA Loan Expert. By the way, if you're having trouble reading this, go to, click on webcam. If you want to get rid of me, the video, or size, resize me, do that. Um, yeah. So I'm in Houston, and I want an SBA loan. And I type it, I'm the borrower. I type in, who's the SBA Loan Expert? Houston, and bingo, this comes up. Now, the first three are paid ads. We got Bank of the West, we have uh, LendingTree.com, and we have US Bank. If Joseph clicks on that, it's gonna cost them five, ten dollars. Do you know what it costs for the search term fall small business loan? I talked to the small term loans, it's up to 50 bucks. That's paid. Bank of the West, Joseph clicks on that Bank of the West, uh, Joseph just made Google five bucks from Bank of the West. But go down to the fourth line. Do I, Joseph, do I have a uh, pointer? Don't, okay, that's fine. Okay, look at this. Bruce Herta's blog. Now, this is pretty cool. Uh, I know, uh, I think it's Paul or Ruba, someone's out of Texas. I did this presentation in Dallas back in August. Bruce Herta was in the room. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Bruce Herta has a blog, that's pretty cool, but go down to the third line down. And this is organic search. This doesn't cost anything. Bruce heard of LinkedIn. And this is what the value of LinkedIn is. This is why you want to be a LinkedIn expert. It doesn't cost anything for organic search. Third, here comes Bruce, and he, we now he's a vice president of business lending at Members Choice Credit Union, SBA Lending. Now, Scroll down to his description, Joseph. Here we go. And I'm having a hard time. Can you pop the font? I, uh, 
I'm, I'm at here. Or, you know, I, I'm going to get rid of mine. There we go. Okay. And Bruce changed this because of me. <laughs> uh, but read what he says. Bruce Herta is an SBA real estate loan expert, lender, and public speaker committed to helping small business owners. These are all search terms. Go ahead and put in there that, he, that you're a personal expert. Why is he the expert? Well, the internet says he is. Um, and he puts in here the type of business he wants to attract. He le he's letting you know, I do real estate loans. What is your niche? Is your niche franchising or, but he's letting you know. And he's repeating these terms. Count how many times he puts in SBA 7A. What, five, eight times. This is not writing English 101. You are crafting this, you are writing this for the sole purpose of getting someone to find you. That's what you're doing. So what I want you to do, and I want you to think about over the weekend, is you put down the type of business you want. What are we specializing? Are you real estate? Are you Houston? He has, he has Houston in there a couple times. Um, are you franchise? Are you veterinarian? Are Rhode Island, well, you put in there what you want to do because LinkedIn, Google will direct those searches to you and that's the value. That's the whole value of LinkedIn. Um, I would treat LinkedIn as your new best friend. LinkedIn is more valuable than email. It's more valuable than direct marketing and you can see this is once you do this, you sit back and you're an order taker. So uh, put up, type in SBA loan, ex, SBA national loan expert. Let's see what happens. And it's just typical Google search. And we got the first three paid, which is Fundera and City National, and that's going to cost them five or ten bucks. And scroll down. And where's Coleman? Coleman. Hold on. All right, go, go back up. I didn't come up on this. Go back up to the third one where it says LinkedIn. There's 13 experts. Click on that. See, top 13 SBA loan expert profiles. Click on that. And now we have Scott Coleman and David Carlson and Michael and Phil. And there are only 13 national SBA loan experts in the country, according to Google. And I'm not in there. And I don't know the algorithm. I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes it comes up. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, but according to Google and LinkedIn, there's only 13 experts. You want to be one of those 13. And I don't know why I didn't show up, but you can see, I, I do know Scott. Um, and, but they put in, you didn't, you didn't put in national, Joseph, did you put in national loan expert? Type in SBA national loan expert. Oh, you did, okay. I don't know why. Anyway. The whole purpose of this exercise is you want LinkedIn to be the results of, of a search. Um, so you want to, so first of all, let's go back to basics, set up your account. Um, I strongly, uh, go to, uh, go into LinkedIn and type in, type in my name, Joseph. Oh, okay, stop there. You can put in a nice picture now. And as you can see, I put in a picture that, that is representative of what I want people to know. I want people to know I'm a Main Street guy. So scroll down. I don't get too excited about education or whatever because I don't believe anybody from USC is, is, is going to reach out to me to buy my stuff. I put it in there. But go down to my, go down to my, my, ex, my uh, summary. Here we go. Bob is the nationally recognized expert on small business lending. Well, if that's what LinkedIn says, it's got to be true. Do not be humble here. <coughs> I've gotten some pretty, <coughs> excuse me. I've gotten some pretty cool speaking gigs. Can you uh, expand that, Joseph? And I, I, 
I, I'm probably violating my rules. Um, I only have SBA in there once. I don't have as much stuff in there as I should. I will fix that. But look at my last point. He's a prolific keynote speaker. I've gotten some pretty cool speaking gigs just from that line. And guess what? Paying gigs. So I put in there what I want to attract. I want people to know I'm an expert. I want people to know that I do trade newsletters and websites and I do training videos and I train people. I want people to know that I've been on Fox News that, and, that I, and that I'm a keynote speaker. And you're all saying, as well, is any of that true? Well, it's on the internet, it is. So think about what you want from that standpoint. Joseph, make a note, we need to expand that. Is that an old one? I thought we did that. No? I think that's an old summary. Um, go, back, go back to the top. And there's a lot of things you can play around with this. I've been getting involved with posts, but go to the top under contact information and click on contact information. It's under uh, view profile, there, right there. Please fill this out. It's that, that's the most, <coughs> the most elemental thing. Don't go to the trouble with LinkedIn. And I, I bluntly, there's two reasons to use LinkedIn, to get a job or to get business. Those are only two reasons. This is not social media, this isn't Facebook. You're not going to be posting the pictures of the vacation or the grandkids. You're, only going to get, you're either going to get business or you're going to get a job. But put in here how people can get a hold of you. And I use it to get business. We use this a lot to, to mine data. And people don't put their information. I'm going to put my mobile phone number. I'm going to put my email. I'm going to let people know how they can get a hold of me. And that's what you want to do as well. If you're going to go to the trouble of telling you you're a national loan expert on doing veterinary loans, um, then have them get a hold of you. Uh, I put in my Twitter handle. I'll talk about Twitter briefly. I'll, I'll, let me do it now. I love Twitter. I love the concept. It doesn't get any business. I think as a social media strategy, you only need to do one thing, and that's LinkedIn. I, Facebook is, I have a good friend of mine said, Facebook's for hobbies, LinkedIn's for professions. And I think that's a good analogy. Remember, the borrower that you want to attract isn't going to go to Facebook and type in small business loan. They're not going to go to LinkedIn and type in small business loan. They're going to go to Google and type it in. And Google will give you the LinkedIn results. And guess what? Google doesn't give you Twitter feeds. Those don't show up in results. I would, I would pick one thing. I would be good at it. I, I've had discussions. And, and I have people who tell me, Bob, you're wrong. Uh, you need to be everywhere. I would rather you do one platform, i.e. LinkedIn, do it as well as you can, and ignore the rest. I don't even have I I, I don't even have a Facebook page. I, I I just I think it's for hobbies and that's fine. But I have not heard of a story how people get. Probably the best way to analyze this is you are in the business to business world. Facebook is I would call it business to consumer. If I am Bob's Deli. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be on Facebook, and I'm going to tell you what my specials are because I want to get a broader crowd. Um, but I'm not going to go on Facebook and tell about a loan that I closed. I will get a picture, and I will write up a little article, and we're going to talk about this, and put it on how I closed this loan to this vet. I get these emails, and I'm sure you do too, about people bragging about they closed this loan. Think about it. What is the benefit to me as the recipient of that email that says, I just closed a $2 million veterinary loan? It means absolutely nothing to me unless I'm the vet. Therefore, a better strategy is to take the picture of the vet smiling with the cute dog or cute kitten and her staff, get a little quote that says, uh, Paul, you're the greatest thing. You know, thank you for helping me realize my dreams. And you're going to put that. Now let's talk about how you post things. Let's see. Let's go back to my go back to my picture. Um, you're supposed to change the picture every 30 days. Uh, you can play around endorsements. Uh, there's a way to find out how many connections you have. I'm not, uh, that's not important. I have 500. Who cares? I'm using this to get business. I'm not using this as a vanity page. I don't care how many connections I have. 
I appreciate the endorsements. Go down to the endorsements, Joseph. I appreciate people endorsing me. It solidifies that I'm an expert. I don't care. I don't care about that. All I want people to do is come here and know two things. Coleman sells stuff to small business bankers to help them make better loans. That's what I want to get across. And that's what the whole purpose of my LinkedIn page is. And yeah, it's nice that 99 people do that. And obviously, we, want, we all want stats. So I, it's nice to have those. But I don't care. What is important, let's go back to the summary page, Joseph. What's important is right there. What do I want people to know? I want them to know I'm the nationally recognized expert. LinkedIn says I am, so I must be. I'm the publisher of the Comb Report. And what is that? A trade newsletter, website, SBA and small newsletter. And I, file, I need to put in SBA and national expert a couple more times. Um, and I, yeah, a little vanity. Helps people know that I've been on the news and I'm sourced. And that's, you know, that helps build the profile. Um, and then, of course, I tell the speaking. So that's focus on your summary. Put up a nice picture of yourself and rotate that picture. Joseph, we should, that picture's been up for how long? A year? Yeah, we need swap it out. And the reason why you want to swap the picture out, people don't know, but if they go to your website, they know something's different. Okay, go back down to my post. I've been playing around with this. I believe strongly that you should do this. Now, I write a lot. Feel free, I will give everyone here, feel free to take whatever I write and publish it under your name and say, hey, with Coleman. Um, but you go down, you can see I, these are just different things I've talked about. But I want to create, I want to create a persona that I am the expert when it comes to small business. And when you publish stuff, then you all got my book. Uh, there's a reason why it's not a bestseller. <laughs> it was a fun exercise to write. It was a pain in the ass, but it was fun. Um, but the first thing I did on my persona is I'm the author of, and that, that adds to the perception. Coleman knows what he's talking about. And that's what you need to do. Now, you can write, and I mean, you can write a 25 page ebook. You can hire a ghostwriter, go to Odesk. Um, uh, you, can, you can get a freelancer. You can get a book done. A decent 25, you, you, you can sit down with someone for a day, dictate it, have them transcribe it, have them ghostwrite it for $1,000, and you could have an ebook <coughs> of just 30 to 50 pages on financing whatever your niche is. Pick what your niche is. My niche is I want to be the expert in financing commercial real estate in my footprint for over $2 million for manufacturers. So do an ebook on financing manufacturing plants in Dallas. Um, you know, the expert's guide to buying uh, hotel property in, in San Diego. And put that in your LinkedIn profile that, hey, I published this ebook. It doesn't matter that it's a 25, 30, 45 page PDF. Google, there's a, there's a great case story of a pediatric dentist who did this tripled his sales out of the Washington, D.C. area. The book was only 70, 80 pages, and it was catchy titles such as The Five Things Parents Need to Know About uh, Their Kids' Teeth. Well, I'm, I'm a parent. I, I want to be a good parent. You know, The Five Things uh, Responsible Parents. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I should know about that. So consider that. There, you can, that's easy stuff to do. You want to create an online persona that you are the absolute expert in that um, niche. So the first thing you do is you define your niche, you put in your summary. Now what we do is I publish, uh, I have a group, and I also publish something called Pulse. And Pulse is new. In the past, LinkedIn will only allow you to publish articles where you were invited. Now anybody can publish. And what's pretty cool about that, it goes to all your contacts. Now, my contacts, obviously, are you and, and, and other bankers. Um, but once you, once you start developing a following and people want to connect with you, then uh, they automatically get that. Now, type in, Joseph, um, Oklahoma Chamber of Commerce. No, in LinkedIn. I'm sorry. In the, yeah, right there. 
LinkedIn has a group for anything you want to know about. So let's say I want to know about the Oklahoma Chamber of Commerce. And there it is, Heart of Oklahoma Chamber of Commerce. If I'm in Oklahoma, I want to be part of that group. There's 171 members. Subway owners, veterinarian owners, people who want loans. And, and what you want to do, and this is where I said become an expert in one thing, get 10 or 15 groups. Here's, type in my, our group. I have the Coleman Small Business Lending for Lenders. And get, it, and get involved with those groups. And for example, here we, uh, we have a, we, yesterday we ran an article um, on needed changes to ensure SBA 7 a more secondary market pool vitality. Maybe it should have been viability. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but comment on these and get involved. If you want to know what's going on with Subway, guess what? There's a Subway franchise owner group. There's every group imaginable. I, I pick any obscure topic. If you want to know title, um, <laughs> uh, tide uh, changes in Portland, Oregon, I'm sure there's a group for that. There's some scientific group. Um, and, and what does this do? So if I'm a BDO and I want to finance hotels in rural Nebraska, I think I'm going to join every hotel owners association. And I'm going to get involved in that group and I'm going to see what they're discussing. They're discussing Disability Act requirements and how the government's doing this and minimum wage problems. And, you know, I'm in Seattle Airport and now I've got to pay my people 15 bucks an hour. What am I going to do? And start participating and start being a thought leader because, th therefore, you're establishing your expertise in these groups, and then someone says, hey, I need a loan. Oh, you remember, I remember Paul, that guy, that guy who was he with uh, what, Comerica Bank or with some crazy bank. Uh, maybe I should reach out to him. And that's what you want to do. I think this is an extremely effective strategy that's going to put money in your pocket. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, to reiterate, there's two reasons to use LinkedIn. Number one, to find business, to get involved with these groups, and number two, to find a job. LinkedIn has a pretty good automatic resume builder. I'm not going to play around with that. Make sure you have all that. Go back to my homepage, Joseph. And I have my education. And anyway. It, it, will, it will create a very <laughs> nice looking resume. The advantage to that is if you're looking for a job, you don't have to do anything. And be careful. I've seen people, yeah, go ahead, publisher, education. Uh, scroll down, Joseph. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, now they even have logos now with Santa Barbara, volunteer. Anyway, um, it automatically creates a resume for you. You don't have to do anything. And that's pretty cool if you're looking for a job. Please don't put in your summary the initial paragraph of your resume. Strong worker, self-starter, looking to motivate uh, people to build a national SBA department. Well, that's, that's, not, that's not, that's your resume. That's not how you're trying to attract business unless you're trying to attract a job. I get calls, not as many as in the past, fortunately. But for a while there, during the recession, I was getting calls once a week. Hey, Bob, I'm out of a job. Who do you know? What, what, what can we do? Um, solve that problem by taking care of your LinkedIn profile. Make that up to date. Make it professional. Put in there everything that you want people to know what you do, what your volunteer work is, where you go to school. Um, anyway, that's, that's interesting stuff. Um, go back to the top, Joseph. <coughs> See, look on where it says who's viewed your profile on the right-hand column. Bring that up. This is, this is the swarmy, sleazy part of LinkedIn I don't like. <coughs> you should know about it. Um, I'm sorry, go up to the scam. I, I can see, it says that I have had uh, 414 people have viewed my page in the last 90 days. 
That's pretty sleazy. Um, now I pay the six. It, LinkedIn's free. I pay the sixty dollars a month um, for more robust things. I'd use it for data mining for my list. I can go and see and, and see who's looked at my profile. I only mention this is that you need to be aware of that this is really public stuff. It's not going to go away. Um, I don't like. I think it's. I. I don't like it. I. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem if someone wants to look at my stuff. I don't like to be told you've had nine people look at your stuff page for the last week. I guess now some people as a strategy will use this. And I talked to one video and she said she loves it because she then clicks on that and says that there's a name she doesn't know about, Bruce Smith, the manufacturer. She'll call that person or you reach out to that person, email that person. Uh, interesting strategy. I'm not about to go and contact people. Hey, why, why'd you click on my LinkedIn profile? What I, what I, who I am says it all. Um, but some people do do it as a strategy. Um, so there's a lot of robust information. They're constantly changing the algorithm. Uh, this is new. I haven't seen this before. 18 actions taken. Uh, then at the same as previous week, I added 12 people. I shared two updates. I added two connections um, and then you scroll down see these people these pictures these are people you can connect with and you can send them messages I pay for a little bit more I greatly resent the spam I get on LinkedIn I believe people do we'll talk about that next week in terms of email strategies I would not use LinkedIn as a platform to blast out direct messages hey I do veterinary loans I would use LinkedIn as a platform for saying, um, posting articles. All right, uh, I'm running over. I apologize. I'm passionate about this stuff. I think it's fine. So I talked about the job board. Um, there's a lot. Type in, uh, Joseph, type in Spirit Bank. Uh, you can do just, yeah, Spirit Texas. That's fine. So now we have groups. I would encourage this. If, uh, you know, I, I'd love that. Our philosophy and motto is simply Texans helping Texans. I'd like that. Uh, now, therefore, it tells me if you're in California, Bob, we don't want to deal with you. But if you're in Texas, we're going to help you because we want to help Texans. I like that. And I assume if I'm directed to the side, I'm looking for a banking relationship in Texas. So not only can you do it personally, you can do it corporately. Um, I talked about groups are an excellent way for target marketing. Um, t type in, just type in, I, I hit this, type in Dallas franchise. I don't know what, this is when I spoke at Mid-America in the summer. And look, there's a Dallas-Fort Worth Franchise Association. If I'm in Dallas, I want to be a member of that group. And 179 members. I don't know what it's about, but I think I want to be part of that group. Um, consider creating your own group, but if you do, make sure it's robust. Type in uh, Coleman Small Business Lender. The reason why I do this is that I go, oh, Coleman has a group. And it's going to tell everyone how many members we have. Well, you're clicking on the wrong thing. Anyway. Um, Okay, so let me, let me recap. LinkedIn's for two things. LinkedIn is for getting a job or getting business. Brand yourself. Consider how you want to be branded in your summary. Um, give it a call to action, Marketing 101. I am the expert in whatever. As I said, don't be humble. Put down exactly the type of business you want to track. I want to track manufacturing. I want to track new construction. I want to track franchise. You know, I'm, I'm the expert in subway financing nationwide. It doesn't make any difference what it is, but put that in there because you're going to get that's going to be free referrals to you. Um, make sh play around with the search engines, Google, LinkedIn. They're constantly changing this. So after you put in your summary, constantly update that. Type in different permutations of how you think people are, are going to get a hold of you, and that's the secret. Um, 
how do I, how did I get that business? How did I get that loan broker or that debt or that person to call me? And they said, well, you were referred by, in the old days, you were referred by the CPA or referred by this person or that person. Today, you're referred by Google, and that's who your business is coming from. Um, I think I've beat this up enough. Um, does anybody want to ask me any questions? What you, uh, yeah, ask questions. Bring them on. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I just wrote the question uh, on the sidebar. I don't know if you can read it. Um, I just want to know how much weight you put for uh, using a LinkedIn account versus other marketing methods. And Say that again? Sorry? Oh, okay. I submitted it. Okay, go ahead. What's your question, Paul? I'm sorry. Okay, uh, you said we're going to talk next week uh, about different uh, marketing strategies, but how much weight do you put right now in LinkedIn um, adverts to get um, marketing going uh, versus other methods? How much weight do you put into it? And if you use LinkedIn, you're going to use the premium edition or the regular edition? All good questions. I don't think you need to do the premium edition at $60 a month. First of all, start with the free edition. If you're finding that you want more of the robust data analytics that I use, um, for example, with the premium, I can go in. If you and I aren't connected, I can go and find your email address. Um, I don't. I don't think. Don't start with the premium. I went for years without paying. For it, so I don't think. In terms of strategy, if I'm devoting five hours a week to marketing. I'm, I'm almost, put it this way, I'm going to devote all my time to LinkedIn until I get that done. The nice thing about LinkedIn is once it's done, you're done. And it's a maintenance. But I would devote 100% of my efforts to get my LinkedIn profile the way I want it to be. Then I'm going to go, we'll talk about email and direct mail and do that. But the nice thing about LinkedIn is, unlike email, unlike direct mail, you don't, once it's done, it's done. So... Um, I think LinkedIn is the most powerful way for you guys to make money. And I'm not even, I, and I don't get paid for that. <laughs> Does that make sense, Paul? Yes. Cool. Any other questions? From Paul or anybody else? Okay. I. I cannot emphasize enough on this. I, I play around with it. Um, I I don't I, I don't practice what I preach on a lot of this stuff. Um, I, I obviously I, I thought I changed that homepage. I don't know why. I don't know why we went back to that. Anyway, but it's very valuable. I know I've made money off of it. I know people have found me through that. Just just the fact that I can be found on a Google search is is amazing. But that. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about, we're going to assume that LinkedIn is perfect, and we're going to talk about email and direct mail. And I, and I have some definite strategies that you should do that don't cost anything. Well, I cost something, but it costs very little. And enjoy the week, and I'll talk to you Friday. Thanks a lot, all.